Religion can be of three types. It can either be philosophy or it can be artistic or it can be scientific. Sufism is third kind of religion. It believes in experiment, not in belief system. It trusts only the truth that is already there. You have only to uncover it. This is the way of Sufism. To start with, Sufism says you have to prepare yourself so that no prejudices, no conditionings come in between you and the truth. The journey starts with you dropping beliefs, theories, philosophies and systems. Only when you are empty of all thoughts, your eyes can be ready, receptive to see that which is. The state in which human beings ordinarily exist is called nafs by Sufis or ego in general terminology. The word means desire nature. Nafs means desire nature. Every human being is plagued by this desire nature. Hindus call this as vasna. Buddhists call it as tanha. There are many impressions that are gathered as we interact into the world of objects and beings. Tanha means when desire have no more, the desire to possess, the desire to be powerful, the desire to be this or that. Every moment we are aspiring to be this, that, to achieve, to attain attain this, to achieve that, to attain that state, you are full of these desires or nafs and because of these desires you cannot see what truth is. Your desires go on mushrooming each moment and becloud the vision and then these overcrowd your consciousness and when the consciousness is too much overcrowded by desires, there is no possibility of seeing the truth. When you are full of lust, you start seeing things according to your lust. It is like having tinted shades on your eyes. Then everything will get affected by that tint. When you are full of desires, you start projecting. And then you start seeing things which are not there. According to your desires, you start giving tint or hue to these things. One day, just go to the marketplace, fully satiated, satiated with your food, go have a stroll on the street. And then another day, fast and go again on the same street, you will be surprised. It is no more the same street. When you are full, you see certain things on the same street and when you are hungry, your outlook is totally different. When you are on a fast, hungry, you will see restaurants, foods and things like that. You will go on missing the shoe store and many other things. When you are well fed, you will not see the restaurants at all. You may not have any idea that they exist there or not. You constantly choose according to your desired nature. When you are full of sexuality, you will only see women or men. If you are a woman, then you will be men and men alone. When sexuality disappears, you stop seeing men and women. No more divisions. It simply does not matter whether the person is a male or a female. It is meaningless. The first thing that you see in the other is whether he is a man or a woman. Have you ever watched it? You never forget this. You can forget everything else. You can forget even the name of the person, the face of the person. But you never forget whether the person is man or woman. Why? Have you ever forgotten 
about anybody. Have you ever wondered whether he is a man or a woman? I know him twenty years ago. I do not remember his name. I do not remember his face and I do not remember anything about him. But have you ever wondered whether he was man or woman? No. That you always remember, that goes deep into you. It is because of nafs. The first thing you look into is whether the person is man or woman. Otherwise, observe the news reporters. I always wondered why our reporters never report so many persons. Instead, they divide persons into male and female. If you ask someone how many people were there, they will tell you X number of women, X number of men and children. It is all because of nafs. When you are not plagued by nafs, you never look into another's sexuality. That does not matter anymore. You are not concerned with the form of his body. It does not mat matter whether he has breast or not, whether he has a beard or not. You do not see it that way. Once nafs has disappeared and the desired nature is not functioning, the other is simply a person, just a pure person. Maleness, femaleness are irrelevant facts. Who bothers? Otherwise, those are more pertinent and relevant facts. The first thing that you see in the other is a reflection of your nafs. Sufis say, nafs is the state where man exists and through nafs there is no possibility of seeing God. Nafs can only see sexuality, money, power, greed, etc. Nafs is blind to God. Unless you drop nafs, you will not see God. And God is everywhere. Only God is. All is God. Nothing else is. But you will not see God. Not only that you cannot see God, you see God, you will have to drop nafs. In order to see God, you have to drop the nafs. Why is nafs a barrier? Why does nafs become such a barrier? What exactly is nafs? Nafs is neurotic hunger that cannot be satisfied. That is why it is neurotic. And there is no way to fulfill it. Either. The more you fulfill, the more it grows. Nafs is a constant hankering constant desiring to have more. If you have money, you want to have more. If you have beautiful woman, you want to have more. If you have power, you want to be more powerful. Nafs always seeks more and more and more. This more can never be satisfied in any way. In the very nature of things, the desire for more cannot be satisfied. Whatsoever you have, you go on desiring for more. You have ten thousand dollars, you desire for more. And this continues. The more you have, the more you desire. When you have eleven thousand, your desired nature demands twelve thousand dollars and so on and so forth. You have millions, it will not make a bit of difference. Ten thousand dollars or ten million, it makes no difference. The desiring nature always goes on asking for more. The desire nature or nafs is like the horizon that appears very near, very near within reach. But you will never reach it in any way. After two hours, when you look, you will find that it has again receded back. And the distance always remains the same.
this goes on. That is why all the religions have called this desire nature, the source of all kinds of illusions and an illusory line as the horizon. The horizon does not exist because the earth and heaven never meet anywhere. It appears because the earth is round. It just appears that somewhere the earth and the sky are meeting just yonder, there. And it seems so close that it seems worthwhile to try. It remains always so close and always so distant. Between you and the horizon, the distance is constant and it always remains the same. Desire for more cannot be satisfied. And because the desire for more cannot be satisfied, you cannot see that which is. You always hanker for that which is not. So your mind is somewhere else and you cannot see that which is very obvious and surrounds you. You see the horizon but you never see yourself. You see the distant. You do not see the nearness and God is in your neighborhood. God is really inside you. You are God and that is very close and you do not have any time or energy to look for that which is close. You will have time and energy only when your desire for the distance has disappeared. Why does nafs exist? Nafs is a neurotic state of mind. Just look inside yourself and you will always find nafs. Why does this nafs exist at all? What is the reason for its existence in the first place? Man is afraid of his inner emptiness. The inner seems always, the inner seems almost like a kind of death. Look within, there is emptiness in nothing else. There exists a silence, an eternal silence, never disturbed, not even a ripple arises there. Not even you are there. Because you are noisy, you are the crowd. At the innermost core of your being, there is pure emptiness and that creates the fear. One wants to fill it with something. One wants to become something so that this emptiness can be dropped. That is the reason that nafs exists. It is because of the fear of inner emptiness that you go on stuffing your you may not have washed it. When you are feeling very empty within, you start eating too much. Also, when you are feeling very lonely, you start eating. When you are missing your beloved or lover, you start eating too much. You stuff yourself. You just want to have a feeling of fullness, but no food goes into your inner emptiness. It can only stuff your stomach. It is destructive to your body if you eat too much. And you always remain empty. Someone becomes a food addict. Somebody else becomes a power addict or money addict. These are all addictions. And these are real drugs. LSD or marijuana is nothing compared to money compared to power and compared to luck. These are really destructive elements and I am not saying that LSD or marijuana is not destructive. Yes, indeed they are destructive, but in no way it is as dangerous as compared to money or power or lust or food. Whenever you are trying to fill your inner emptiness with anything, you are going against and far from God. Remember that inner emptiness is the very face of God. When you stop stuffing yourself with food, money, power, lust, etc., then suddenly you will become aware of who you are. 
Sufi says that the first thing to be understood and experienced is nafs. And by understanding it, the dropping happens. Nafs is the first mukama on which a seeker has to move. It is not that you have to drop it. Just see it and that is the way to drop it. In the very realization of the absurdity and neurosis of it all, nafs vanishes. That dropping has a beautiful name, nafs call it tamba. Tamba means turning. It means exactly what Jesus says when he says repent. The original root word from which repent comes has nothing to do with repentance. It means return to the source. Return, that is the meaning of repent. It has no idea of guilt in it. Just return to your source. Sufis call this Tamba. Patanjali calls it Pratyaha. Turning towards yourself and Mahavir calls it by another name that means coming home. It is the same process. First understand the nature of nafs, desire, desire for more, that mad neurotic desire for more. Understand it and in that very understanding tamba happens. See the futility of it and you turn back. Then you do not rush towards the horizon. Instead you start moving towards yourself. This is 180 degree turn or about turn. This is what tamba is. With the turning or tamba, the third thing starts happening. Sufis call it as hal. Hal means a state of being, but a temporary one, an altered state, a changed state of being, a state of no mind, but for a single moment it becomes like flash. For a single moment you are rooted into your being and again you are uprooted. It comes like lightning. Hal means a state of consciousness but only temporary one. This is what the Zen calls it as Satori. When truth appears in flashes, it is Hal or Satori. In the beginning it will happen only in a momentary way. Sometimes it will be there and at other times it will not be there. It will be like a ray of light in your darkness or a single star in the dark and clouded sky. And sometimes you will be able to see it and other times you will not be able to see it at all. This is called harm. This is what in the West we call altered state of consciousness. The consciousness goes on changing. Man is more interested in consciousness now than before. In the East, Sufis call the summer or different situations through. They create the summer by singing or kawali to arrive at such a state of altered consciousness of heart. 